Hey everyone, welcome back to Cards Row. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to make melee attacks and attack with your offhand, like so. This video is sponsored by Ninja Bear Studios. Feel free to check them out using the links below in the description, and let's go ahead and get started. So now I'm just going to go back to my BP sword and open up the static mesh of the sword itself. And with this open, I need to add a couple sockets. So I'll go ahead and add one called S-Scan01, and I'll just leave this kind of close to the base of the sword, like so. And then I'll add another one called S-Scan02, and I'll leave that somewhere closer to the center of the sword. And then I'll add one called S-Scan03, and I'll leave that near the top. And this prefix will be used pretty soon. And then the same thing for the shield, and I'll go ahead and open that static mesh, and I'll just simply add an S-Scan like so, directly in the center of the shield. And I'll just add this directly in the center of the shield as soon as I click plus sign to add the socket. And now let's go ahead and configure the primary attack animation. And I'll just head over to Mixamo and import some sword and shield animations. So I'll probably just do this pro sword and shield pack and just retarget it to my character. And now I'm just gonna add this sword shield slash ability and just right click this head over to create and create an anim montage. And I'll just call this am underscore attack like so. And I'll go ahead and double click to open this up. And what I wanna do is add a melee scan notify state. And under notify state, just look for that melee scan. And I want it to be for the duration of this attack. So I'll do around here to here, perfect. And this is exactly why we use this S scan prefix. It's defaulted to the Ninja Bear Studio stuff and everything is already pretty much set up for you. So all I need to do is just head over to my weapon query, open this for the tag editor, and then for the user description, I'm just gonna type in find active sword. And then for the root expression, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna select the all tags match and then I'll expand this and look for that sword tag that we created in our item. So it'll be inventory.item.type.sword, exactly how we set it in our BP sword over here. And now I wanna create an attack for the shield just to show you how that's done. Uh, I don't have a shield attack animation though, so I'm just gonna use this where he just flings his forward out as if he's casting. So I'll go ahead and right click, create an anim montage, and I'll just call this am underscore shield attack and open this up and kind of like in the same way, I'm going to go ahead and right click in the track add a notify state and look for the melee scan. And it'll be for the duration of the shield sticking out. And now I'll select the melee scan and on the top right for the weapon query, I'm just going to look for the all tags match. And then for the description, I'll just do um, find active shield. And then I'll match the tag to whatever's on my BP shield, which is going to be this, which is going to be the inventory item type shield. So I can go ahead and look for that, select it, hit OK, and then I'll save. And I also want to change my scan mode from line trace to box sweep. And we also want to set the dimensions that matches the shield dimensions. And we also want to set the dimensions so that that matches the shield dimensions. And now with those set up, let's go ahead and create our primary attack. So I'm going to go back to my content browser and then under my gas folder, I'm just gonna right click and create a new folder and I'll call this abilities, double click to open this up. And now I'm gonna right click and create a new gameplay ability. So I'm gonna look for a blueprint class and I want it to derive from one of the ninja components that comes with the plugin. So I'm gonna look for the combat ability attack, like so. And then I'll go ahead and hit select and I'll just call this, um, GA underscore attack 01. So I'll double click to open this up. And now what we need to do is set the animation montage on the right in our details for our primary attack. So under the animation, I'm gonna choose combat animation provider. And later on, you will we'll go over some directional evades, directional hits and weapons and so on. And I'm gonna go ahead and select that AM underscore attack. And I'll also go ahead and just disable motion warping. I don't want that for this tutorial. And I'm gonna change my ability tag to ability.attack.primary. So I'll go ahead and click on this plus sign, select the source, add new tag, and then select that primary like so. 
And then for the block abilities with tag, I'm going to go ahead and add, I'm going to go ahead and add a new tag called ability.attack.secondary and add this to my source and select it. And this is just going to make sure our attacks don't interrupt each other. And under debug, I'm going to go ahead and just check this enable debug to make sure our attacks are working. But we'll also need to add some gameplay effect to our attack. So I'll go ahead and create a gameplay effect class by going back and then I'll just go up the hierarchy to the gas folder, right click, create a new folder, and I'll call this effects. And then I'll right click and create a blueprint class. And I'm going to look for the combat effect underscore melee hit like so. So I'll go ahead and type in GE underscore melee hit, click enter to open this up. And it's already going to come with some pre-existing tags that makes our life easier. Don't have to reinvent the wheel here. And now I'm simply just going to add a combat effect damage, not back. So under my components, under my asset tags, there's this combat dot effect dot damage dot melee. I'm going to select this and actually add another one, which is going to be our knockback as well. And now under our executions down here, I'm simply going to just, I'm simply just going to add one to our calculation modifiers, open up this index, and I'll go ahead and click on this drop down for the backing data. And I'm going to look for one that says temporary variable right here at the very bottom, like so. And I'll go ahead and make sure it's selected to add. And then I'll go ahead and add the modifier magnitude. And then for the scalable float magnitude, I'll make, I'll set it to 1.5. And I'll hit compile and save. And now I want to create another gameplay effect. And this is going to be a simple modifier that's just going to reduce our stamina by five. So I'll go back, right click, select blueprint class, look for gameplay effect, and just go ahead and select the plain gameplay effect. And I'll call this GE underscore secondary attack cost. Double click to open this up. And now all I'm going to do is just add an index to our component. And I'm going to look for the combat. And I'm going to select apply additional effects. And then under the on application gameplay effects, I'm going to go ahead and add one to this array. Drop down the index and look for the combat effect underscore cancel stamina regeneration. And then under modifiers, I'm going to go ahead and add one and look for that ninja and look for that ninja combat attribute set dot stamina. And then I'll select add and we want to add it by negative five like so. And now that we've set this up, I'm going to go ahead and create another gameplay ability for our second attack. So I'm going to go back to our scene, go to the abilities folder, right click blueprint class and look for the combat ability attack. Go ahead and select this blueprint and I'll do GA underscore secondary attack 01 like so. Double click to open this up. And now all I need to do is I want to set the damage gameplay effect configured on the previous step as the melee damage effect class. So we'll see this melee damage effect class and I'll look for the GE underscore melee hit like so. And then I want to set the animation montage to that AM underscore shield attack and I'll go ahead and disable motion warping. I'll enable debug and then for the cost gameplay effect all the way down here, I'm going to select that. I'm going to set it to GE underscore secondary attack cost like so. And now for the ability tag, I want to go ahead and add that secondary tag to it, to the ability tag so it can be used for activation. And then I also want to block the primary attack like so. And now after those are set up, let's set up some inputs in order to actually use these. So I'm going to head over to my inputs folder, go to actions, and then I'm going to right click and under the input tab, I'm going to look for input action and call this IA underscore primary. And then I'll just duplicate this and call this IA underscore secondary. I don't need to modify this because by default, they're already set to a digital bool and we just want to set them on or off like so. And now I'm going to go back to where my data asset is. So in my gas folder, I made one called DA underscore ninja. And now I want to apply the default gameplay abilities. So I'll go ahead and add two. And the first one I'm going to look for is the GA underscore attack one that we created. And then the second one will be the GA underscore secondary attack a one that we also created like so. And then I can go ahead and exit out of my data asset. And now while I'm in my input folder, I'm going to go to my IMC underscore default and add my two mappings. So the first one I will do is that primary that we created. And I'll just use my left mouse button for this. And then I'm going to add another mapping and I'll do my secondary. And for this one, I'll just do right mouse button like so. And now I just want to open my NIS 
underscore gameplay or my ninja input setup data asset. And now when I open up my ninja input data asset and I'll go ahead and add two more input handlers and I'm gonna set both of these to gas activate ability by tags. And the tags I'm gonna use is for the first one, I'm just gonna set it to the primary attack that we set in our GA underscore attack01 right here. So we have this ability dot attack dot primary ability tag. And then the second one will be the secondary attack. And now for my primary attack, for my input handler, I'm gonna add an input action, which is simply just gonna be that primary, that input action primary. Same thing for my input handler of my secondary attack. Just go ahead and add your secondary attack like so. And now I can actually go back to my, I can actually go to my map, hit play and test these out. So when I left click, you're gonna see my character attacks like so. And then when I right click, I should see the blog, the blocking happening with the debugging. And that covers our creating melee attacks using Ninja Bear Studios. Thanks for watching Code Throw. Like, subscribe, comment below what you want to see next, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.